You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Hey, Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, got another vintage collection review for you today. It is the HK-87 Assassin Droid Arcana. So, based on one of the droids from the start of the Ahsoka series, it is VC-330. You can see there, a little look, you get the same thing on the front, on the back as what it is on the front. <laughs> so you get, a, you get to see on the back what it is in, yeah, anyway. So yeah, HK87, I do have a couple of the red ones. Um, so I was excited for them to release this version as well. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited to uh, bust this one open. It's uh, nice to see the, you know, the color variations between, between the two droids, or the two sort of styles, I guess. Um, but yeah, droids wearing capes, I'm, I'm on board. So it looks good on the card there. There's still a bit of a bummer. The Black Series versions only came with the blasters, but luckily the Magna Guards came basically with an extra weapon, so they immediately went to these guys. <laughs> so without further ado, let's bust open HK and uh, take a look at the figure. All right, folks, here is HK87. As always, with my reviews, we take a look at the packaging, then we take a look at the accessories, the, the paint applications, the, the articulation, and then we do a peg test at the end, just to make sure your action figure stands are gonna fit. The purpose of this one is I'm trying not to wobble the table too much, just because of the sort of slightly sort of spindly legs. They're not super thick, and he's not super heavy. So I'm actually gonna start off with the peg test. So yeah, we've got here the, the usual stands that I've been using, the KR, KR figure stands that we make at Kessel Run here in Collectibles. Um, it's just picking picking which peg is going to fit, and it's generally this one for vintage collection, and that they tend to work pretty damn well. So I decided, yep, yeah, we're going to get him on a stand. It's a nice tight fit. I'm going to sort of wiggle it on there a little bit. Yeah, kind of still get him, get his stance right there, which is cool. So I'm glad now for the rest of the review, I don't have to worry about this one falling over because that's, uh, you know, for, basically for my sanity and everyone watching. I'm pretty sure you don't want to see the figure falling over plenty of times. <laughs> so yeah, he comes with the uh, electro staff, which is cool. No sort of electro effects for it. It's, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's fine. It's going to be pretty delicate anyway. Um, yeah, nicely sculpted. No paint detail. It's probably not super necessary. It's cast in this sort of, almost sort of gunmetal, gunmetal grey sort of colour. And uh, yeah, I dare say we'll hold that pretty well. So yeah, we'll get straight on to paint applications because that's really the only accessory, unless you include the the cape, which I dare say will come off quite easily. Yeah, it just sort of slips over the head. So you can have him exposed. So yeah, you just sort of just see the stitching there. Pretty simple piece of fabric. So we're gonna pop that back over, back over his head there. I like the sort of look of it, sort of draped over a shoulder like that. I think that looks quite cool. I don't know about you, but C-3PO would have been cooler with a cape. No, <laughs> he was fine the way he was. Um, yeah, nice. I like the, uh, you know, like I said, I like the change in paint schemes, I like the, the sort of the maroon thrown in there with some sort of cream and then this almost almost a grey blue and it's a slightly bluey grey which is cool 
I'm already noticing there's not really a great deal of weathering on this guy, which, you know, could probably do with a little bit of a wash, just to, just to get some dirt in the cracks, you know, just to define some of those details sort of through here. Um, but yeah, that's something you could definitely do yourself. You know, I, I've always backed Hasbro by sort of saying, you know, particularly with Stormtroopers, like... They did a big poll a few years ago. It was like, would you rather see your clones and your stormtroopers clean, or would you rather see them printed dirty? Um, and I think, unless they're, you know, like your remnant stormtroopers or something, I think people would rather see them clean. And uh, you know, if they're feeling particularly obliged, I'd uh, yeah suggest to weather them up yourself. Um, this is something you could definitely do with this guy. Okay, so there's a peg on the back of this guy. Right here. And I'm wondering whether that will house a blaster. Or the staff. So yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a softer plastic. So I can't, not sure whether this will, okay, yeah, right there, you just got to find the right spot. So maybe there's another spot that's a little bit lower. Yeah, not really sure whether that's its intended purpose. It's kind of like poking out a little bit too much, maybe more so for a blaster. But, yeah, interesting, interesting. I don't recall that being on the other, on the red one, but maybe I didn't look hard enough. <laughs> we'll do a little bit of a comparison side by side. I'll go grab another one before we finish. But yeah, I'd say paint applications overall pretty clean. Um, yeah, just a little bit of weathering probably wouldn't have hurt, but again, that's something you can do yourself if you if you feel so inclined. You know, articulation wise, you have a ball joint in the head or ball and socket in the head. Is yeah, just in the head. Uh, ball hinges in the shoulders. The swivel there as well. Ball hinges in the elbows. Hinges in the wrists. Looks like there's a hinge there, but I'm not sure that it is. I think that might just be a... Uh... Yeah, no, that's just a straight swivel joint there. So, little painted detail there. Looks like it could have been a wrist joint, but it's not. So, yeah, just the swivels on the wrists with this one. I got an upper torso joint there. A little swivel there at the waist as well. Little ball hinges in the hips. Get a swivel cut there at the thigh, about halfway down the thigh. The hinge in the knee, hinge in the ankles. And then you got that rocker joint in the foot too, so you can get those uh those crazy dance poses like this. Even the HK-87 droids were kung fu fighting. So yeah, now that we've taken a look at the figure, let's compare him to the red one. Bear with me for just literally a second. And magically, just like that, a red one appeared. Yeah, I've got him actually just blue tucked to another sort of stand. I have him and another one sort of standing behind Morgan Elspeth. So I just wanted him raised up a little bit. Um, yeah, he's got the same thing on the back. I don't recall... Seeing this, maybe that's just me being a little bit ignorant. And you know what? Maybe I didn't even review this guy. I'm pretty sure I would have. So yeah, his his cape's a little bit different. Even this guy got a little bit of sort of weathering and stuff throughout the figure. And you can sort of see some sort of silver scratches and stuff throughout. But yeah, definitely. Both of them definitely needed a little bit of weathering, I think. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna definitely gonna play around and uh, see what the uh, 
the little thing on the back is going to do, whether it's fit there for a blaster, we'll see. I'll go dig out a, uh, a spare blaster. So yeah, there's the new HK87 droid with his not so old counterpart. <clears throat> These figures really aren't that far apart in terms of the release schedule, but still cool. Really hope you enjoyed the review. Appreciate you tuning in. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And subscribe if you're new. Greatly appreciated. We'll see you again very soon for some more toy reviews. Till then, may the force be with you always. We would be honored if you would join us.